guys and today we're going to be doing a review of the newest patch for smite that just came out today which is patch 4.22 passage to egypt you can see here we got some i was gonna say christmas theme but it's not christmas theme winter theme skins uh to feature which we'll get into first since it is the skin first one though is oh i apologize in advance ku kunoshi kunoshi shirkat i don't know but it's a pretty cool skin obviously a ninja themed uh skin i'll probably get like blast in the comments like it's not a ninja it's whatever specific thing it is but uh, i did see someone mention on twitter that it was definitely inspired by like two like different anime i think or something like that i forget but i have not a clue at all so i apologize i i'm not you know knowledgeable on that but that is the new uh Sir Ket scan pretty cool shinobi is the art of stealth shinobi shinobi so. is the art of stealth something involved with shinobi there i don't know but that is uh available in the odyssey it's uh not the reward i believe i think hachiman is a reward in fact let's check that real quick yeah hachiman is the bonus item and then this one is just purchasable same with druid stone my Yeb. kidney stone test came back and i did not pass <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so we didn't pass this kidney stone test. That's a nice pun there, but druid stone gab pretty cool um Not anything too crazy, but I see what they did there I know where they were going for it um, with the druid stone as you can see here. It's very similar to the design on um, Kernunos's glaives and stuff. I'm sure you'll see some similar designs throughout Terra or Morgan in fact, that's Morgan right there. So yeah, the Celtic obviously they're going for that druid Celtic, you know vibe with the with the skin um nothing too crazy or it shouldn't be anything too crazy but we'll look at the skin later on in another video next up we got onimusha hachiman if you look into the face of evil i will be the one looking back at you that's an amazing voice pack like that is if you look into the face of evil i will be the one looking back at you just that that reverb and that like little echo just makes it i do have like headphones on it's turned up pretty loud so you might not hear that just in game casually the little subtle details that you can but really cool the skin looks cool as well but uh the voice pack is what stood out to me that is the bonus item to the odyssey these two are purchasable and then this is the reward so next skin is available through a chest i'm guessing these two will be in a similar chest probably some christmas themed chest or a winter themed chest but first is snow day Scylla skin's amazing i mean Scylla always has pretty cool skins mainly because she incorporates um good lord suku there we go um you know you can incorporate that into the skin as well and obviously we have siberian huskies for the dog or for the monster you know the, the whatever you want to call suku uh and Scylla just dressed up as like a little ice princess so pretty cool there it's not dessert for dinner if you only ever eat ice cream <laughs> um next up we have ice mage agni pretty self-explanatory agni is a mage this mage happens to generally be a fire mage now this skin is an ice mage i mean i, I don't know how much more self-explanatory you need but i bet they've never felt the devastation of an ice age paul's a really cool voice back too it's pretty similar to the hockey uh, the hachiman one but not as much demonic reverb in it but pretty cool skin uh I am actually excited to see the effects on this because I think because Agni's always had fire effects and stuff. Well, not always. He had the, the, the I want to say vortex, but the space theme skin. Um, obviously, different effects there, but I think they're gonna go. I'm not gonna say all out, but they'll put some emphasis into the this Agni skin just because they've never had him be ice before. I mean, his recolor, I guess, if you want to go that way, but it's it's still fire. And Circuit also has Mastery Skins updated, so that'll be pretty cool. Obviously, no voice pack to that. I don't even know why I tried. Uh, big Circuit fan, she's always been one of my favorite assassins. I either do really, really good with her. Like, I'll have... You can check my channel. I think I have some games where I was, like, 12 kills in the first, like, six minutes. I'll go, like, 24 and 2, and the next game, I'll be like, all right, let's play Circuit again. <laughs> like, 2 and 10. Like, it's, just, it's it's either way for me and Circuit. I, I either get far behind or I snowball. <laughs> it's never anything in between. Odyssey 2018, obviously the Circuit, the Geb, and also a Scarab Jump Stamp is going to be available for purchase. The Hockey Mint is the bonus one. New quests and achievements. Complete all seven Egyptian quests to receive the Egyptian Conqueror achievement and the Egyptian Loading Screen skin. <clears throat> New emotes, Geb gets a dance as well as Hockey Mint. Cutesy Snowman Avatar and Winter Holiday Music Theme are available, as well as some miscellaneous stuff here with the Curse of Discord. You can read that if you want. Now we have item balances, the important stuff. 
Uh, Warrior's Bane, decrease the physical penetration from 22% to 15%. Wow, that's a huge nerf there just for, a, is that it's tier two of it, I think? Um, and then Titan's Bane gets an increase in gold cost from 2150 to 2300, and it decreases the pen from 33% to, 33, uh, to 30%, sorry. So I actually do like this change. Titan's Bane has always and probably will always be an essential item on almost every physical god, uh, especially like junglers and stuff like that. It's just, it's the pen item for physical gods and it's just great. So to increase the price a little bit, only by 150, that's not much. And the tier two gets the biggest dip of all. Um, but once you get to the final build, it's only 3%. I think this is a good overall change. Um, I never really paid too much attention to Titan's Bane just cause it's always been a focal point in everything, but it'll be interesting to see how this changes it a little bit. Maybe you won't see Titan's Bane getting bought all the time. We'll have to see. Spellbound Kusari. I didn't know what that was at first until I realized that it was Shogun's Kusari. Uh, I guess that's the tier two of it or whatever. Decrease the magical protection of it from 50 to 40. And the final build on Shogun's is the magical protection is decreased from 50 to 40 as well. So just both balancing that out. We got Void Stone here. Decrease the magical protection from 70 to 60. So I'm, I'm definitely seeing the theme. Magical protection getting the huge nerfs there uh, throughout. And I'm gonna guess that we have some more coming up. Uh, no, a little bit different. Magical Power gets the increase on the Tiny Trinket by 5. Lost Artifact gets a decrease in cost from 600 to 550. Increase the cost of Restored Artifact and do more by 50 to preserve their original prices. Okay, so when you branch into Lost Artifact, that gets a decrease by 50. However, if you choose to go into Restored Artifact and do more in the do more tree, you're going to be spending 50 more just to balance out the prices on that. So this part of the tree got decreased, the other part got increased is basically how to sum it up. And then it increased the physical power by five on it as well. Soul Trap, it decreased the cost from 1400 to three, uh, 1350, again, going into here. And then increased the cost of Soul Reaver and Book of Thoth by 50 to preserve their original prices. So they did the same thing um, with Soul Reaver and Book of Thoth that they did with Restored Artifact and Doom Orb. And speaking of Doom Orb, here we go. Increase the magical power from 40 to 60 in it. We got some changes to Doom Orb, but we're going to see it come back into the meta. Honestly, before we start reading that again, no, I don't want to see Doom Orb back into the meta. Um, that was a horrible time. Actually, let's finish this first. So increase the magical power by 20 on it. Increase the mana from 7 to 10 and decrease the max stacks by 10. So overall, I think this is... A massive buff to do more now you could say that the max stacks is a nerf however you lose your stacks when you die with do morb so let's say you're at 50 stacks you would go to 25 before now you're going from 40 to 20 it's just gonna be easier to get those max stacks you're probably not gonna be holding on to the max stacks an extended period of time anyway so that doesn't really matter so overall I think it's a big nerf for doom or big nerf big buff for do morb we'll see how it plays into it but what I was saying with the do more meta I think that was like, that was a while ago. What I'm talking about was like, end of season two, beginning of season three maybe? But like, it was just do more about mages. Like Poseidon especially, oh my goodness, that was nasty. Um, I remember it was just like, is do more an item? And then build it. If you were a mage, you were building do more. Next up we have Soul Eater. Reduce the cost by 100 on it, increase the power by 10, and reduce the evolved power bonus from 20 to 10. So, yeah, Soul Eater definitely provides a unique effect, that's for damn sure. Um, simply too expensive and comes online too slowly for most gods. Okay, so I get that. They're too expensive, dropping it by 100, giving it a little more power, um, but then reduce the evolved power on it to kind of balance that out. I like it. I haven't seen a whole lot of Soul Eater personally, probably just because it is a very unique item with a unique effect, so I guess people are trying to incorporate it somehow. Maybe this will help a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see, because I was excited for this. This was just different, and I, I personally like it on Uller. Might not be the you know, most common thing, but it's something different. I like to switch builds up and do things a little uh, <laughs> a little unconventional, so. Fenrir, oh wow, I see a lot. Fenrir is getting a large buff this patch. Oh shit, okay. I'm excited. I'm a big Fenrir fan. He's one of my favorite gods. I always do really well with him. Unbound Runes. This passive no longer affects Seething Howl. Okay. I never used that for the Howl anyway, so I'm fine with that. Brutalize. 
Fenrir now gains bonus physical and magical protections of 5 plus 1 per level while- What? Whoa, 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 okay. Fenrir's already tanky as hell, and I build Fenrir like half hybrid tank. I build my Fenrir like the most standard stereotypical season 3 build with like Jotun's Wrath, Breastplate of Valor, um, Bulwark of Hope, Titan's Bane, like that cookie cutter bullshit, and it still works. So the fact that he's getting now more protections on his Brutalize, oh my goodness. Seething Howl, no longer consumes runes, we already got that. Now increases the physical power buff, used to be 10 to 70, is now 20 to 80. Increase the life steal by 5% on it as well. Oh man, Ragnarok. Adjust the damage to be consistent. To be consistent, increase per rank and increase the range of attack from 12 to 15. I do actually like that though. But at the same time, I don't. Because you know how many times I've like been right on the edge of getting somebody, but they're just a little bit faster and you can't get them? It really sucks. But at the same time, that's... That's okay, because that Fenrir alt can set up so many things. Uh, added one, or added cone targeter to this attack to more clearly show its range. Okay, well that'll help significantly. I like that change. I like this change. This change is nice. Uh, it'll help a little bit, but th I love this change, but I love it because I'm a Fenrir player. I'm not sure how other people who don't play this god are going to love this change. Um, RTO. Energy Stone, which is uh, the Malprey. Decreased energy surge heal from 60 to one, or used to be 60 to 140, sorry, is now 40 to 120 per enemy god hit, and decreased the magical power scaling on it as well from 25 to 20. So some nerfs there. Life tap decreased the magical power scaling from 10 to 5 per tick. So more nerfs coming for RTO. Seems like that's a pattern with gods though. They come out super strong, then they get nerfed a little bit, and then they get nerfed a little bit. Maybe a little buff here, and then nerf, nerf, and then eventually they're non-existent. So we'll see if that keeps up, and eventually we'll have a non-existent RTO in a couple months. Kukulan, Berserk, reduced the bonus shield from 20 to 20, or 20 plus 24 per level is now 10 plus 20 per level. Huge nerf there, but I like that one. Vent Anger, decreased self-movement speed buff from 10% to 5%. Yeah, excuse me, 10% to 5%. I'll take it. Amir. I haven't had changes in Amir in a while, have we? I feel like Amir's just kind of been there for a while. Shards of Ice, Frostbite passive is now immediately applied to enemies in the area and refreshed by the detonate. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. That'll be really interesting, actually, because that's just going to do more damage to them, which is going to make the Shard of Ice hurt a lot more than it already does. So that's cool uh, if you like Amir, which not a lot of people do. Actually, a lot of people like him and a lot of people hate him. It just kind of depends. It's a preference thing. I hate playing against him, man. Amir is one of the gods I cannot stand playing against, especially in duo lane. I hate it. Um, but with that being said, that is all for this patch, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe for more content like this. The skins will be coming out hopefully later today. Whenever Smite decides to put the PTS online is when you guys will get these skins. So be on the lookout for them, and until next time, peace.